So what happens when we use our press credentials to go to the New York City Toy Fair? Well, we take a look for James Bond collectibles and James Bond toys. We got to see what we can find in here. Let's go explore. We've got a little bonus here. We didn't know we were going to run into this, but Funko has their James Bond. Really nothing majorly new here, um, things that we've seen before, but here is the James Bond Aston Martin in the Sean Connery Goldfinger outfit. Very cool. I don't want to take it off here. I don't know if I'm allowed to touch anything, but I pre-ordered this. I'm really looking forward to this car. Funko did not disappoint. They're kind of cute, but I think it satiates us up until 2019. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. I'm here with Barry. Barry, good to see you. Hey, David, good to see you as always. It's been a bit, right? It has been a while. It feels like a family reunion yeah, kind of. I, uh, <laughs> I was trying to think. It was it 2012, and I couldn't remember. It was San Diego. San Diego Comic Con. We'll always have San Diego, David. That, we, we will actually. <laughs> but uh, here we've got New York. So Indeed, we're, New we're York. We're coastal friends. But in worse weather though. The yeah, that's food. that's true. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> there's that. But here's the thing. This is going to be an interesting one, and a lot of people have been asking about this. We're here to talk about James Bond, um, but we have no James Bond things no, to no, show you. No. Sadly, my, my knighthood, my potential knighthood will be at risk if I, if I give up Her Majesty's Secret Service secrets. And we don't want to do that. We like <laughs> no, Baron. No. And we like Factory Entertainment. But well, I do want a knighthood one day, people. That's right. So, so just forward this to the appropriate people. Yes. But, but the reality is, is that we do want to talk about Factory Entertainment yes. first. Yep. So a lot of discussion on the message mm -hmm. boards, a lot of discussions in the James Bond collecting world. Factory to entertainment, lost the Bond license, mm -hmm. never gained it, have they had it the whole time? Let's set the record straight. Had it the whole time, guys. Um, you know, that's, we, we are, we're good servants. We do what we're told. And, and in licensing deals, that is exactly what the deal is. You go to a licensor and, and Eon is, is one of the licensors. There are very few people with a 50 plus year heritage of non-stop performance mm -hmm. on film and, and other media. And, and so, you know, they're a, they're a rare and, and valuable valued partner to us and so we we are granted permission to do what we do by them and it comes with a caveat of rules and and some of those rules sometimes are you need to tone down your products a little bit and, and go quiet for a little while mm -hmm. and let the product sell through and then come back and yeah. that's where we are and you're um, back we're back yeah you're back. we're back which um, is a perfect time because we got a little bit of a, a runway to bond 25 yep. till 2019 yep. Yep. <laughs> well we're, we've got two cool things we've got bond 25 and we've got now like Luckily for Bond fans, we're in that anniversary sweet spot. So for every movie for the next several years, we've got interesting anniversaries coming up. So next year we'll have, I believe, a Majesty's Secret Service. That's we right. had the 50th and, and actually pretty much for a, for a fairly long period, there are no breaks. Then there's a little break, but, but from now until we'll all, be, we'll all be dead and in our graves, we have anniversaries for every movie. And anniversaries, as weird as they may sound, they're kind of like birthdays for people. They, yeah. they kick things back again. Everybody starts to remember. Oh, that movie came out of that and, and it, it sort of sets the nostalgia thing rolling Absolutely. again and so Bond is is going to enjoy that and I'm I know Bond never went away and Bond always returns but for me yeah. we're now in kind of the, the golden age of Bond it's going to be it's going to be are. exciting we're and I see think some cool and, stuff. and by the way we've got a great following out there but there, here's a reality that I think people should understand factory entertainment it's a company it's a business yeah we're a so business you yeah. can't think about oh we need to you know pledge to a forum or we need 
to pledge to a YouTube. You've got to think about the bigger global world. Customer is king, and but we are making a product that is is quite a niche product. You know, very few retailers carry our product. But but the, the priority is this: the license store, which is uh, you know Eon, right, and then the market, then practical reality. <laughs> um, that's the biggest challenge, yeah. and then everybody else. So we do try to talk and listen to the forums, and and I guess for people, one of the things they'll find sometimes is they may feel we're not listening to them because we don't answer their questions. It's not that we can't. It's usually because we can't answer their question because we're either restrained from doing so or the question is more elaborate than it requires. I'll give you a great example. Um, the attache case. We've, we've been trying. We've been doing Bond now for a decade. It's, it's come July of 2018. It will be our 10th anniversary of doing Bond products. Oh my gosh. For 10 years, I've been trying to get an attache case made. I cannot get it made the way I want it to be made because I know that if I put an inferior product out there to the fan base, I'll get crucified. Sure. So I haven't made it yet because I can't find anybody who wants right. to make it with me. And it's not but a I lack will, of trying, by I the will way. never <laughs> give up. I will never give up. Yeah. One day, one day I will have that thing made. But it may take another decade. Who knows? But I'm game. It's an interesting subject because you know the research and development, the R&D that goes into this, without getting into too many details, I do know that Barry has reached out at the highest levels of collecting, manufacturing, uh, haberdashery, of the best brands <laughs> yeah, in London yeah, to try yeah, to get that case yeah. made. So it's not a lack of trying. And, it, and that item is probably the pinnacle because it, it, it encompasses so many different skill sets. It has it has tooling, it has engineering, it has, as you say, haberdashery, it has leather work, it has, you need, you need to make one of those properly, you need a, an army of artisans. And that's, I guess, the biggest challenge making Bond replicas. We're replicating objects that were typically made as one-offs. And they were handmade for a movie and they had to do on screen what they appeared to do. The reality of the prop, and if you've ever seen some of the real props, they can be kind of disappointing. They, sure. they, when you actually hold them in your hand and you go, this is not what it looked like. And right. so making a prop replica, you have to deliver what you think people saw. Yeah. And, and I, what, they, what they wanted to see on screen. And I think it's important also for the viewers to understand that you can't replicate everything. You can't replicate no, no. Um, a Walter PPK, an existing no. phone, an yep, existing no. item. Anything with a, with, a, with a brand name on it or an existing product, so watches are an out because technically right. that would make me no better than the guy who's selling fake Rolex watches off, of a, off the back of a cardboard yeah. box. It's a knockoff. Yeah. Those people own those brands and they have relationships with, with the Bond franchise that, that are you know storied and, and have history. We don't want to wreck that. We don't want to, it would be great. It would be a cool item and I wish I could do it, right. but you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's just not possible. So yeah, there are anything that's a found object or a recycled object that contains somebody else's intellectual property is mm -hmm. just not available to me unless that person wanted to partner with me and I can I can probably count on no hands the amount of watch <laughs> manufacturers that are going to want cheap oh, knockoffs of their watches exactly made. <laughs> exactly not exactly part of their financial no. model and then yeah. firearms is a tricky one we ethically as a company and certainly in the current climate do not want to be making replica firearms of realistic sure. real world firearms it's just somewhere we don't want to go yeah. and and that's just you know that's all I'll say on the matter we're not being politically correct we're not trying to be liberals we're, we're just saying that's not something we want to do because it's just it's just a, a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down yeah fantasy weapons non-realistic guns no problem right all right so there are and you can't see this but there are three large henchmen behind this camera waiting to choke <laughs> out the camera person if we delve too deeply but we have to ask the question what can you tell us is coming? Well, we're, we're working on all sorts of things, and we're working on. We'll get the mic closer. Yeah, we're, 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 we're whisper, whisper. Shh. I can say this only once. No. Um, we're working on a lot of things from a wide variety of, of Bond timelines. Um, people will be pleased to know that there's some Daniel Craig stuff. Um, there is Daniel Craig. Yeah, there is Daniel Craig stuff. We're okay. working on some Spectre items, um, including a certain very attractive wearable mask that Mr. Craig wore. Um, a wearable mask that Mr. Craig yes. wore? Inspector. Inspector. Okay. I can't imagine what that would be. Wow. Um, and we're working on some older items. We're working on the, the second of the um, of the Spectre rings from uh, from Thunderball, the Emil Largo ring. Oh, fantastic. Um, which is my personal favorite of the various iterations that we saw. Um, the first ring we did many, many years ago was kind of boring. It was 
it was apparently carved out of wax and painted with shoe polish and, and was very black if you remember you I didn't do. really notice the surface and, and was not to be honest let's let's be frank people not the most attractive of things right and then next movie comes along and they bling it up a little bit and they add some mother of pearl and they make it much more attractive and it yeah. was so much more prominent you know we remember that scene where she's gripping the steering wheel absolutely you get the close up when he's in the casino and he's playing the cards you yeah. see multiple close-ups of the ring um, and then it moved on and there were further iterations and we hope one day to have, do, to have done all of the iterations of the Spectre ring and then maybe we'll build some sort of you know Spectre display where you can oh, have them nice. chronologically arranged yeah. um, we're doing some functional things I, uh, I I walk with a cane from time to time so we are actually doing a Bond cane um, which oh. will be kind of fun and there was a recent Bond movie where canes were used um, yes, and uh, that's very recent watch movie. this space very recent okay. movie yes. I know watch this coming. space and, and for the moment that's kind of the first lineup these items are expensive so let's be clear we're not releasing 20 things at once right. because we realize you guys have got to pay for them and hey let's be truthful we have to pay for them people you know we're not I don't drive a Ferrari I can tell you um, and we have to save up for these things so those items will be spread out throughout the course of 2019 some towards the end of this year okay. we, we hope to make announcements at San Diego Comic Con of what's coming exactly and reveal it and have physical objects there pending Eon's approval and then of course that kind of leads us into the ramp up of 25 but you're looking at a product line that will take us through the end of 2018 all the way through 19 and 20 so watch this space if there's something you want to see um, let us know and we will try there is a there is a forum running a, a sort of a wish list at the moment and I do look at it regularly and David's always helping me with ideas and suggestions so we will we will listen to any ideas um, and then we have to go and check that Eon are happy with it and I guess that the sort of the big secret news is to cap everything off in this early run we will be revisiting a certain golden weapon Weapon that was very, 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 very popular. Um, so popular that people are trying to get them on eBay well, all the time. You know, and this is one that, as a collector personally, I never ever want to reissue a product that we've done. Mm -hmm. But there is so much demand for this thing. I can tell you, since that product sold out, yeah. I have had two or three times a month phone calls from people saying, can I buy it? I missed it. And right. we'll be honest, we underestimated the demand. We made the edition size too small. We made a 500 signature edition piece, which unfortunately will never be replicated because both gentlemen involved have sadly lost it, left right. us. And, That's right. and it was a deep honor to have done that product. It was a personal wish fulfillment for me. And, mm -hmm. and you know, to have them together, Together before they passed was was you know the stuff of it's the stuff I'll tell my grandchildren about um, and and that will never happen again but the regular gun was was a thousand pieces and they they did not touch the sides it's it, it's one of the weird bond props that has this 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 undefinable appeal yeah I don't really know why because the movie was just it's an okay movie but it's right. not the best bond movie but for some reason you know people just love that item and that's to, to me it's um it's a visual representation of that almost campy bond aspect yes. of gadgets yes. because I will tell you you know I have a big collection when people come to my collection they go okay okay even the Daniel Craig stuff okay oh that's a screen use jacket the Daniel Craig one. okay yep. okay yep. as soon as they come to the golden gun they're like does it come apart yeah can I yep. hold it yep. can I get a picture with yep. it? It, it there's it, something about it. it it encapsulates it encapsulates all that is bond certainly in that period so you know we hope to be able to give people firm details on it it, it it may take us three years to get that thing made right honestly um, because it has to be done properly and it will not be a straight copy of the product it will be a new version what we're calling you know 2.0 or a redux okay um, obviously visually externally there's not much we can change because it's sure. meant to replicate an actual prop and we've studied the original props and looked at them and and I think you know we got our original copy pretty damn close um, but there are always improvements that can be made so that's where we are now we're analyzing the improvements we're looking at them and we're making some decisions and if it's commercially viable and and we can make it happen then you you will be the first to know fantastic um, and I, I can't wait to get it out because it's also damn oh, yeah. cool <laughs> by the way people should understand you're a fan too you're a huge oh, yeah, fan yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, grew, I, I grew up with it it's in my blood um, you know I I was a kid of the 70s and you know I, I 
I'm in this business because I, I actually live very close to Pinewood Studios. Um, and when I was at uh, secondary school in England, um, which wasn't Hogwarts, as my children seem to think it was, because <laughs> now we live here, they, um, they, uh, I, I did a work experience at Pinewood Studios. Oh. Um, and I went to Pinewood, and it would have been 19... Oh, my God, I'm actually having to try and think now. And um, Clash of the Titans was in 81? production. 81? yeah. yeah. Um, and I went to Pinewood, and I saw that there was the movies that I loved and enjoyed didn't just appear fully formed into yeah. the universe. Yeah, they were made by people. They were people that did things behind the scenes, and it changed my life. I, oh my I and, and I actually, at that time, the Bond stage was there, and there were lumps of things lying around. I've been led to believe there was a DB5 under a tarpaulin somewhere in a corner oh that people gosh. had forgotten about. And, and you know, I, I then, I think, I think a year later, my dad bought me the Lone Star... Um, Moonraker rifle. Oh yes, 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 yes. And, and it was at the time pretty damn good representation of a prop replica. It was pretty yeah. close. You know, most toys at that time were pretty euphemistically realistic. Right, but you right. know, they were, but this one was was pretty darn close. It was the right size. It was the right shape. It was metal. And I got that thing and toted it around the house, and it was ah, oh, it was awesome. And so yeah, I, I'm a fan. I, oh I you cut me in half, and I bleed red, white, and blue in 007. <laughs> That's uh, you know. Do you still have that Moonraker gun? I do not. I do oh. not know what happened to. It. I bought a version. I bought, no, I bought a, another version. I have a copy, and that's when, when we made our Moonraker gun years back. I actually used it as a reference point. Nice. Um, the toy was better than the real prop. Actually, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I was very disappointed with the real prop. It was just this rubber thing, and it, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. very. But it looked so cool on screen. Oh my gosh. So yep, no, that that's me. So I'm I'm a huge fan, and you know I I don't uh, I don't always come across that way, but I'm one of you guys. That's fantastic. Well, I'll <laughs> out tell you, and proud. I'll tell you what we're gonna do because because Barry offered. Um, one of the things is in this YouTube channel, under comments, let's litter this up. Whatever ideas you have, yeah. whatever wish, uh, use your magic wand, this is what you would love. Even if things that um, you think are beyond the imagination, why not? Just put All ideas are, are, are okay. Exactly. Any ideas, and then what I'll do is I'll work with David to try and whittle down a short list of the following things. So just to reiterate, no real weapons, yeah. nothing with anybody else's brand name. No on Bond it. girls. No Bond girls. Yeah, sadly, sadly. Shelly Eaton can't be replicated. Wait, see, but the, but the wheel started moving in his head. You could smell the smoke going on. Um, and no clothing. We do not have the license to do clothing replicas, which is a shame because we could all do with some sartorial <laughs> elegance. Well, not not David. He's always immacul <laughs> immaculately dressed. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm the scruffy one. Pa apparently, it's because I'm creative. I'm allowed to look like a mess. That's right. He's allowed to do that. <laughs> well, first of all, I, so, number one, most importantly, we survived this without being hit from behind. Uh, well, maybe. The secrets are intact. So the gas could be filling the room as we speak. I am getting a bit groggy. I think secret. it's because it's lunchtime. Yeah. Um, but Barry, thank you so much. No problem. I, I My appreciate pleasure, sir. This. Thank this you so much. always fantastic. And by the way, not to do uh, a hint, Barry doesn't even know this, but uh, my cameraman and I more than likely will be at San Diego Comic Con. We'll so we've been, see you there. We've been pre approved. We're going Brilliant. through phase two of that. Brilliant. And uh, we already determined we're going to get our hotel and tickets and make our way there. I'm, it's a plan. Well, San Diego doesn't have a Bond connection yet. New York kind of does. It has that very, very and newest, it, never been done on film. They need to, they need to there, do a there San might, Diego Bond. There might be a small panel there, though. We'll have Ooh. to see. I, I hear Ooh. things. I hear things. Anyway, uh, this has been David Zritsky and Barry from Factory Entertainment here in New York City. Toy Fair, and we will talk to you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hi. Didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor. Move. 